apologize ahead of time for the fridge and the mosquitoes. Hey everyone, it's Brittany from Green Bee Flowers in Strathmore, Ontario. Um, it is the day after our giant harvest um, and I'm here in our garage studio for all our flowers. Um, and I'm going to be putting together bouquets for our subscribers tonight, so I thought I'd take you along on that. Um, I apologize for the sound quality. Um, we have an air conditioner running right now as well as the fridge which is working overtime uh, so a lot of this might be time-lapse so I'm gonna come and show you some pretty things like kind of as we're going but yeah you guys wanted to see how we're gonna be using some of these flowers and bouquets so I thought I would uh, show you what we're doing tonight so I'm excited bouquets uh, that I have to make tonight that are going to our flower subscribers for tomorrow. Uh, so I always start by getting my paper ready. Uh, it, I just I find it is the quickest, most efficient way to get this done. Um, sometimes when you start making flowers, you get really into it, and then you find afterwards you have to go back through and like do all the prep work. So what I try and do is to get all my prep work done first. Now I think I've showed this in a video before. Um, but essentially, we fold our paper into triangles. Um, so I fold it like this. So it's about two thirds of the way up. Um, I know that there are some florists that like to, you know, do the fold it like this so that like it's folded in half but kind of off skelter. I like to do it this way. It just uh, provides me with. A wider edge kind of up here and a smaller edge here so you get to when you fold it you've got a nice wide open space at the top and a nice small hole at the bottom and this is really important because it'll help to hold your flowers together so I'm gonna fold some papers common questions we get from our customers is typically like how long are our flowers going to last? So answering this question as a farmer florist can be difficult because as those of you who grow flowers know, uh, it, it varies from flower to flower. So what we include in all of our flower bouquets that we send both to our floral subscribers and to our markets is this little flower care card let's see up can you see it? there we go um, and essentially it has all of the information on it um, for the flower care so basic things like replace the water don't put your flowers near ripening fruit fruit or in the sunshine um, I absolutely never guarantee how long flowers are gonna last because then that expectation is kind of set um, and if we don't live up to that expectation then my customers are going to be disappointed with their bouquets instead of just giving them instructions on how to get the longest life for their bouquet which is what this is so we include this little card um, in every single one of our bouquets so I'm going to get started making bouquets show you kind of the process on how I do this as as the florist, um, often I will have my girls that work for us do things like our market bouquets and the bouquets that are going to the corn stands. For our floral subscribers, I like to make sure that they are 
all that. I want to make sure that they are matching and beautiful and you know all those things that you expect when the florist is doing your bouquet. So I'll show you kind of uh, my thought process behind that. Um, I've shown you guys how we do our market bouquets in the past, in the, past uh, in the sense that we just kind of throw everything together. This is a little different, um, but luckily for me I've got lots of fresh blooms to work with here. So I think we're going to have some fun. So when I work, boy, so when I work, uh, I like to start with usually a stem for the center. This amaranth is what I'm going to use for the center of this first bouquet. I kind of have a recipe in my brain that I'm going to be working with, uh, but I will kind of like figure it out as I go. The monetary value of these bouquets is around the $40 mark, uh, so you can figure right off the bat they're going to be able to double the size of what we send to our uh, farmer's market uh, because those are $20 bouquets and these ones are for our subscribers, um, our CSAs which is Community Supported Agriculture. Now, when I build my bouquets, uh, I, I tend to like to put some of my greenery right in the center. Uh, it doesn't always stay in the center, but I do really like the contrast of this here. I think that's sharp. You just want a little floppy. So the subscribers for sure um, are at least getting two to three sunflowers. I always try to include flowers that are like at various stages of blooming. I don't need to see the flowers bloom, um, my customers do. So you can see like this one's a little further ahead and then I'm going to put one in that's already bloomed. Um, it'll be done earlier than the rest but at least they'll be happy because there's like a bright flower in there right away. So like this little guy here. Right, it is already already bloomed. It's already ready to go. Um, so we'll we'll add that in here. I like to as well work in my groups of threes um, while I am doing the bouquets. So you can see here, like I've got my three sunflowers surrounding my greenery, and then I'll add in stuff um, like zinnias will be next. As I was as I was saying. Uh, because I have the purple amaranth in here, the next thing I'm going to put in is we have Hibazinia. I don't know why, but it wants to focus in on my face, and we don't want to see my face. Who wants the flowers? Look! The flowers! Um, anyways, as I was saying before, I wanted to add in this red wine here because it kind of pairs nicely with that amaranth. And the next thing I'm going to add in as well is this beautiful salmon zinnia. I like that a lot. We have mountains of gladiolas blooming right now. So every single one of our floral subscribers is getting a glad in their bouquets. Um, I love glads. My dad and my grandpa used to grow glads all the time. Um, and so it's kind of one of those things where I feel like you either really love glads or you really don't. And for me, I really love them. Uh, so I chose a pink one here to match that uh, nice pink zinnia. Now, in the past, what I've done is actually like stick ooh, stick the glad right in here. I won't do that today. I'm gonna kind of set it on the outside to give that a little bit of space there. Um, when I set that gladiola in, bringing it down so that the first flower is gonna kind of be in line with where the base of my other flowers starts. The reason I do that is because they're really tall. And, uh, I'm gonna actually cut those top two. Oh, gonna cut them. There they go. More manageable. Because those top two ones aren't gonna look good when they bloom anyways, right? It's very, very lovely. Next thing I'm gonna do is add in some cosmos. This is a perfect one because it has another two other buds. Right? And those just like brighten that up so beautifully. Now, no, the next thing we're gonna put in uh, for our subscribers this week because we have them is a dahlia. 
this one is going to get Linda's baby. I always rip off these extra little pieces because they're not going to bloom anyways. But yeah, so we're going to put Linda's baby in. Now, because I've got my coral here, I'm going to add her to the opposite side. One of the best parts of this bouquet. Right? So I'll add a couple more zinnias in, but this is kind of the point um, where I'm going to think about like packing the bouquet up. I price my flowers at retail pricing and not wholesale pricing, um, which I think is just fair to my florists who order wholesale. So retail is a completely different thing. It's so gorgeous, actually. Linda's baby's got to go in. have some tall pieces of Saloja. Put this one in. Use white zinnia. Anyways, I'm gonna add that up in there. And then this currently, this is greenery that I get from my wholesaler. Uh, it's just Israel Ruscus. Um, it's a really popular one. It lasts a really long time. Um, I did not plant as much greenery on the farm as I should have, uh, so I'm going to use this instead. So every bouquet will get, it should be three pieces, but I think we're going to do two. getting smush. This is the way I do it. And I mean, if you are more comfortable doing it a different way, that's obviously your prerogative, but to me, I just think that staple it first. I just think that to receive a bouquet that's wrapped like this, I just, I don't know. To me, that just looks nicer. No? Am I wrong? I don't know. Am I wrong? Anyways, so there we go. One's done. Now we have 15 more to go. Right. So now it gets gets its twine. It looks quite lovely from the top. Now it goes in the bucket. that we harvested there. Oh, it's just so, so pretty. Isn't the color stunning? <laughs>
this is much easier to do when I don't have to be the one to wrap. But they're really, really, really lovely. done. The seven that are done are the ones that are going out for delivery in the morning. Um, and I'm going to come back in the studio tomorrow morning and finish the rest because it's hot and I really want to open the doors but I can't because then all the mosquitoes are going to come in. I hope you enjoyed the video um, and uh, if you have any questions about how I make things, don't sweat everywhere. I'm so sweaty. <sighs> the bouquets are pretty so thank you so much for joining me tonight as I made bouquets um, as always like and subscribe I really really appreciate it and uh, see you next time so oh, stop we'll see you next time